Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is episode number 18. Today we're going to continue on our module development learning and we're going to focus on building a brand new module from scratch. This module is going to be a little bit trivial and not necessarily a practical use case, I guess, but it's going to show you a couple different things. The module is essentially going to monitor every time that cron is run on your site and it's going to send you an email. Very simple, but it's going to go over how to build an administration form in a Drupal module, how to use hook cron to do things periodically on your site when cron is run, and it's going to talk about how to send emails from your Drupal module. In today's episode, we're just going to cover the administration form, and next time we will cover hook cron and the sending of the emails. So we're going to get started. We have our test site here, and inside of it we're going to create a new module, and we're going to call this Cron Monitor. Inside there I'm going to create a cronmonitor.info file, and a cronmonitor.module file. I'm going to hop over to my code editor and open these files up. In our .info file, we're going to give this a name. We gave it a description. We're going to say that we want it to be 7.x module. We'll give it a version. and we're also going to give it a configuration page and this is going to be important and I'll show you why in a little bit but we want this configuration or administration form to be accessed through admin config cron monitor so we save this and the info file should be good to go the next step is to start on the module file so in order to do that we'll just go ahead and open up the PHP tag we, sh we obviously could add a little file header here but I'm just going to start with implementing hook menu. So we're going to come out to the documentation for hook menu for Drupal 7 and just like last time we're going to go ahead and grab a copy of or an example of hook menu to get us started. And if you also come back to hook menu documentation you can see down a ways they have an example of setting up an administration configuration page or a series of configuration pages with multiple tabs. So this is important if you want to create or if you need to configure multiple different types of things inside one module. We're only going to care about this first one here because we don't need multiple administration pages in our example. We're going to change the hook part to cron monitor which is the name of our module we're going to create the URL at admin config cron monitor which of course should match up with this the type the <coughs> excuse me the title is going to be cron monitor settings we're going to give it a page callback and in this example we're going to be creating an administration form the page callback for that is Drupal get form and you can read about that here in the API documentation it basically takes a form ID as the uh, parameter and it will go ahead and it will give you that form so you can read about that on the api.drupal.org site and we need to pass in the form ID or the function name for that form as an argument. We're gonna we can call this whatever we want. I'm going to call it cron monitor admin form. And then we also need to give it an access argument. In this case we're gonna create our own permission called administer cron monitor. So in order to create our own permission just like we did in a previous episode of Daily Dose of Drupal, we look up hook permission. We can come down here and just copy this code over. I 
replace hook with cron monitor. We want this to be the same as what we listed down here below. So administer cron monitor. Give it a title. And we can give it a description. Perform administration tasks for cron monitor. Now that we have that set up, it's been pretty basic so far. Nothing really new, but this is where it gets a little interesting. We're now going to create our form function. And this is going to be pulled right here from the argument that we're passing in to Drupal get form. And the first parameter is going to be a form variable and the second parameter is going to be form state. And the form state is always going to be passed by reference, so you want to make sure that that is there. Uh, and your form variable is going to be passed in, and that's where you can add your form items. We're going to, at the end of this, return system settings form and pass in our form variable. And I'll go through what some of this is going to mean. The first thing is the Drupal form API. If you're not familiar with it and you want to learn to build modules, you will want to take a look at the form API quick start guide for creating forms and also the form API reference guide, which is this this is probably something you either should keep handy or bookmarked or maybe even memorize it. I don't know if I'd go that far, but you get the picture. It's very important and it will help you anytime you need to build forms, alter forms inside your Drupal module. So the first thing that we're going to do is in our administration form we want two things. We want a checkbox to either turn the monitoring on or off and we also want a message that can be sent with each email that's going to get triggered. We're going to create two form fields for that. The first one's going to be a checkbox and the next one is going to be a text area. We're going because it's an administration settings page. We're going to make use of the Drupal variables table. So there are a few variable functions that will write and read information from that Drupal variables database table. The first thing we're going to do is click on checkbox here. It's going to give you a little example of a checkbox form item. We'll go ahead and copy that in just to give us a good starting point. Here we give it uh, the name, and this should, in an admin form, correspond to what you want to call your variable. We're going to call our variable cron monitor enable. It's a checkbox, and we want the title to be enable cron monitor. We also need to now add a default value, and this is where the the variable table and variable functions are going to come in. We do a variable get, which you can read the documentation right here. It's going to return a variable. And we go ahead and do cron monitor enable, because that's what we want to call our variable. This is how it's going to be stored in the variables table. And next we give it a default, as you can see here. This is what the variable is going to default. It's the default value to use if the variable has never been set. So this is brand new. We want to default this to 0, which is going to be disabled. We could default it to 1, which would default it to enabled, but in this case we'll default it to 0. And the reason we re the system settings form, let's take a look at that. The system settings form is great for um, administration forms. It goes ahead and it adds the default buttons to a form, it sets its prefix, and it does a a lot of the standard stuff that you'd have to do on a typical Drupal form. In this case, since it's an administration form, it's relatively straightforward. All we want to do is when you click the Save button, we want it to go to this variable that's in the variables table and write out the value depending on if we check the box or we don't check the box. The next time you refresh the form page, it's going to load the default value. So if everything goes through and it was set, then it's going to go ahead and pull out the current state of that checkbox. 
So we'll save this. We'll come to our test site now. Click on the modules page and search for cron monitor. You can see that it's down here. Notice how there's nothing here for operations. Has our description, everything looks good. We're going to save this. Now if you come back to cron monitor, you can see there's the permissions page and the configure option. And this configure option is courtesy of this line that we put in our info file. So that's why that is important. It just makes it easy to get to the administration page. You'll notice we now have a checkbox. Notice how it defaults to unchecked, which is zero. If we check it and hit save, it says the configuration options have been saved, and now notice that it's checked. I can come back to this page and refresh, and it's still going to be checked. So it's perfect. We're almost done. The only thing we're going to do left the only thing we have left to do is we're going to go ahead and add a text area and do the same thing. So you can see we have a text area here. And this is an example we're just going to pull through the same as we did before. We'll drop this in right after our enable checkbox here. Got to do a little bit of cleanup. and we're not going to need this long of a description so we'll go ahead and bring that down and the default value is of course going to change so let's start with what we're going to save this as a variable we're going to save it as cron monitor it's a good rule of thumb to use the module name of your module in the variable in the actual variable name so we're going to do cron monitor um, email text will work be whatever we want. The type is a text area. And then we have to set our default value, which we're going to take the same idea from up here and apply it down here. We're going to change this to our variable name which is email text and instead of defaulting to zero we're going to default it to an empty string. And go ahead and save this. If we come back to our administration page you'll see we now have a text area. It has our title on it, has our description. Notice there's nothing in here by default We enter some text here, hit save, and you'll notice that the text is still there. And that's it. We now have an administration form on our Drupal site that is setting variables in the Drupal variables database table. And if you are if you have the ability to look at the database, I you know urge you to do that. Look at how these values are stored. They're stored in a serialized PHP uh, variable. So yeah, it's a little bit different. It's going to look a little odd if you when the first time you look at it, but it's a good idea to just take a look at how these how your actions in code actually affect the database. So that's it for this time. Next time we'll cover hook cron and how to send email from your Drupal module. Until next time, thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal.